Cause I'm presented before a live internet audience And I'm a Jupiter, Jupiter at night Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Jupiter at Night. My name is Chris. I'm Alan. And I'm Jeremy. Okay, you guys, I'm a little excited tonight. To be honest, I love this topic. Once again, Jupiter Night will be covering space. We are space junkies. I kind of have an epicness to this one, though. Really? Um, <clears throat> you might or may not be aware that there are what NASA considers near-Earth objects uh, flying overhead at the moment. Really? Um, yeah. Aren't there always... There are <laughs> in that shot right there. It looked very dangerous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are always like debris and crap like that coming in, but then but actual asteroids, like you know, like, like the rock extinction. Right, size. like like yeah. why we see you know shooting stars. They're always there. Right. Yeah, that, but that sometimes a shooting star is also debris, or it's like a small piece of chunk. Right, it's the like a, meteor showers are usually caused by smaller chunks, like nothing more than you know yeah. somewhere around <sighs> this size. <laughs> now you know uh, you know I, you don't know <laughs> this, this really isn't the main topic for tonight this was just kind of this got us thinking you know it was funny because nasa tweeted hey there's some uh, near earth objects uh no no worries don't like, panic wait nasa <laughs> yeah, tweets yeah nasa you want to just soak that in for a second nasa nasa tweets about oh yeah stuff flying close to earth no bigs it's okay nasa you're you're cool enough without that you don't need it <laughs> i don't All right. know so when they did have space camp and all that cool stuff, then they were really cool. I think their coolness yeah. is dropping a bit. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this is not how you bring it back. I commend them for Twitter use. Now, what we're really going to talk about tonight is some more realistic, local, um, more probably in the next hundred years type space travel. Well, you know, uh, what was it? Two weeks ago, we talked a lot about faster than light travel theories. Yeah. And, wormholes uh, and what have you. Yeah, yeah. wormholes, black holes, uh, warp drives, all that crazy the stuff. The doohickeys. So now we're going to talk about some stuff. We're going to keep it real, yo. We're yeah. Gonna, we're going to come down to earth here. Now we're going to use one piece of theory here to talk about our show tonight. And it's actually taken right out of uh, Friday's headlines, I believe. Uh, NASA's announced plans <laughs> to launch a probe into the sun. Into the sun. That's actually a little bit of an exaggeration, but that's what the headline hey, says. Hey, Chris. Hmm. That's hot. Nice. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. You should tweet that, dude. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, now this actually is not going into the sun it's going to be sitting about four million miles away from the sun which is actually still the closest we've ever gotten yeah it's going to take eight weeks just to get there wow <clears throat> but you know what they're doing once they get there hanging out no no it's a little cooler than that. roasting some marshmallows i, I hope so <laughs> i hope they equipped it with some marshmallows no they're going to watch to see what ex- armor it in marshmallows right <laughs> <laughs> it's safe make the whole thing build the whole thing out of a stick Right? right, a really big, like a log, I suppose, because it's going to be near the sun, right. so a yeah. log, and then just coat it with marshmallows. Yeah. But then what about the chocolate? Oh, you need to send a separate probe for that. Something with foil. Just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so they're actually going to be watching uh, the the plasma on the sun, what what accelerates it. Like a television? They're going to... Uh, a different kind of they're plasma. At, they're, no, not a plasma television, <laughs> like the actual, like, you know, hot stuff. Yeah. Um, because they think that holds the key to building an engine. Like uh, they want to harness the sun, the power of what fusion. That's what it is. I kept. I always get fission and fusion mixed up, and yeah. that's dangerous. Oh man, you don't want to get those messed up in a laboratory situation. No. no. <laughs> good thing Hopefully they don't. Good thing, it's, <laughs> good thing it's NASA on the case and not us. Right. Um, so they're that, now. Let's just say that they they get this. They're going to be there. Um, what I think. Uh, 2018 is when they're going to arrive, or when it launches, and then they'll be there eight weeks after that. So that's still a ways Oh, off. sweet. Get ready. Mark figure. it on your calendars. <laughs> but let's just say, let's put ourselves, say, let's put ourselves 100 years out from 2018. Okay. So in 100 years from 2018, uh, they have this engine. I'll probably be dead. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. And, uh, I probably. Wow. Yeah. You, you still have some hope, though. Okay, I, li- yeah, I like bit. that. I'm going to be impressed if any of us make it to uh, 2018, to be honest with you. So. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> If we keep doing these late night shows, we're going to kill ourselves from the sleep deprivation alone. Uh, now, uh, the, so let's just say we have this drive. It's 100 years after we get this drive. We realistically could be possibly traveling around our solar system, not at a super high speed. I don't think beyond yeah. our solar system. Can I just get even more real than that, though? All right, lay it get on. Get real, no, man. We, we talked about ion drives that already exist yeah. that are very efficient for yep. long-term per- travel. 
There was also some articles recently on solar se- uh, sales. Yeah, yeah. That are pretty much the same thing. Very low fuel costs right. and very high travel efficiency right. over long periods. <clears throat> but, you know, even getting to somewhere like Mars, uh, you were telling me that, that based on the orbits and everything, yeah. it can vary between like four months and like three years almost. Yeah, you can, well, you can have, if you're lucky, you can have, I, I think it was a six-month journey. Mm-hmm. And if you're unlucky, you have like a year and a half journey or something like that. And uh, so, depending on the where, where if the Mar if Mars and the Earth both kind of sync up, it's a shorter distance. So you right you have you kind of have to launch at the right time to make that happen. Right. But then there's also the opposite rotation, which means once you get to Mars, you have to wait. You have to wait till Earth comes back around for you. Again. Yeah. Nice. Or you actually have to Fun. wait. You have, you leave to meet Earth to meet as it, it as arrives. It's, yeah. Which is which is crazy, <laughs> um, like space. I know. So, but now I'm curious. With this kind of with this kind of propulsion, we could get there. I, I hope so. Now I'm curious though. I don't have the answer to this. It just came to me, and I, maybe the chat room can help us out. What is the longest that any human has spent in space up to this point? It's not six months. Oh it? no, no. It's, I mean, oh, it's, it, and it's definitely not a year and a it's, half. It's not the yeah. It's not the year and a half there or something they say they would need. And that's one of the things they they talk what about. What about in the space stations? They have a rigorous exercise program, but they still look at massive bone loss. Mm-hmm. Like uh, some people that are up there for a short period of time come down with you know sixteen twenty percent bone loss. Atrophy. And then and then they have to go through uh, physical bone therapy. or muscle both. Well, but the bone. How do you too. lose bone? Because Be- of the lack of gravity. The, your body essentially goes. Your body says to itself, "Hey, you know what? I don't need my bones to be this strong to hold the structure up." And your body's really good at not doing anything it doesn't have to do, so yeah. it stops building bone. Now they can they can huh. stave off some it can, of the it'll even take some. by exercising, but you can you can't simulate the the, the strain on your bones. Not now well, I find this interesting because I think people who follow the space travel stuff, you know, you've seen like a 2001 Space Odyssey where mm-hmm. yeah. you know, that big thing's just circling around to generate gravity. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I was watching an interview with a, a fellow from NASA, and he said that they think they totally could do that. They just don't want to be the first ones to try it. What? <laughs> they just don't want to be the because they don't know if, if it goes wrong. That's a bad. That's a bad PR yeah. move, <laughs> and they lose funding. So they say, yeah, we think we could do it. So, but they would need to, they say they do believe they would have to come up with some sort of artificial gravity system to make a travel to Mars because the main reason is, is even if you were still in some sort of good condition, mm-hmm. once you got to Mars, you would be so physically exhausted that you wouldn't be able to perform your duty on Mars. Um, and, and because of the harsh environment, you'd have to have an EV suit and you have to carry equipment and they say you would just not be in the physical condition. So robots. Gra- we need the robots well, to well, help us. And that's one of the theories is some people say send robots and some people say send humans. Now, Jeremy, have, have you have you looked at uh, the other concepts besides colonization of Mars? There's other there's other possibilities that maybe don't even involve putting well, us down are, on a like, planet. This this shot that we actually talked about during our Faster Than Light show as yeah, well. Yeah. Uh, this is actually NASA concept art. I found out it's from the 70s. Some bio ship. Yeah, right. it's basically a colony ship. Now, this is not a very good rendering. They've had better um, stuff come out about it uh, more recently. But it's the idea is that it would be a series of giant rings that, that rotate, and the centrifugal force of, yep. of rotating we- creates the gravity the gravity that will offset the atrophy and everything and the, like that. And the, and the ship could be, you know, a, 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 a cylinder, but because it's the rotation that causes mm-hmm. the gravity, they can have different planes of land th- right. on, di- on the different wall, on the wall of the cylinder. Right, because every one of these is being pushed out to the outside. So, now, some of this, some of this, why, you know, some of the, why do we need these types of ships? Why are we talking about coloni- colonizing Mars, things like that? Well, uh, I think, you know, a lot of us are familiar with the work of Stephen Hawking, um, and he's been quoted, and along with a lot of other people that say, you know, we've, we're just, we're all going to die. Using, we're using this planet up. Well, not only that, but Stephen Hawking is basically, he's paranoid. I mean, when you get too smart, I think that just comes with it. Uh, but basically, you know, things like the Cuban Missile Crisis, which could have tipped off a global nuclear war. Yeah, we just would have been. Would have eradicated the entire species. Well, and Alan's a pessimist. Before yeah. the show. Right. You were dumping on it. You were saying, you were saying we're basically doomed to either use up the planet, blow ourselves up. Mm-hmm. Even if we go and colonize somewhere else, it's just going to create in, like a rapture, bioshock type of environment, environment where we're all going to go to hell. Potential, uh, potentially have a, a chance to survive. As long as we don't put all our eggs in one basket. But, you Plus, know, we're going to die anyway. I would disagree with you on that point, Alan. I don't think where we would go, we would create a rapture unless the people leading that effort were corrupted, which, you know, obviously everybody's a little corrupted. It's leading it'll that. just happen over time. Look at what we've done to our planet. Couldn't you make that corrupted. same argument for the Wild West and 
we managed it out just fine. I think it'd be I think it'd be more Firefly. I think it'd be more like it becomes the wild frontier. Yeah. And it's kind of like restarting again, but we're we're ourselves. I think it's more like moving across the Mississippi and colonizing the Wild West. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, with but even it's less of a chance of getting in touch with your you know, getting supplies from the old And maybe these cylinder travel ships would be the communities. And places like Mars. Well, I think that's the idea of these big ships is so that you don't have to or the always moon. be looking at the de- destination. Right. But that you have viability during the travel. And then you eventually arrive somewhere. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a dark thought because the reality is, is that we really just can't come up with a propulsion system to get us to another Earth-like planet, even right. though we can now see them. Right. Some, uh, some uh, uh, I like home. have been talking about uh, you know, some of these colony ships and stuff. There would be humans that had never seen real planets, had right. never lived on a real planet, because right. it would take generations to reach their destination. That's, that's kind of crazy to me. Now, before we, now that's, we're going kind of long-term there. Let's bring things back a little more local again as, mm-hmm. a, kind of a, as kind of a centering anchor here. Mm-hmm. Uh, realistically, there is some progress... At at one time, at one point, you know, we're 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 retiring the space shuttles, and that kind of feels like a setback. Yeah. But we're also, uh, you know, work is underway on the new Orion uh, uh, rocket. They've already they've begun tes- testing the engine outside of of the housing, but just the mm-hmm. engine itself. Um, President Obama himself is pushing for some legislation. Is that right? Is yeah. That- he recently urged Congress to pass a series of bills that would have NASA. Uh, visiting or landing on asteroids by 2025. That's what it was, yeah. Like the asteroid belt. For mining and stuff like that, or what? Or or just as a way station from here to there, wherever mm. there it might be. Or what if you could go to some of the farther asteroids and put up some sort of you know, monitoring station there so you could look for incoming objects, mm-hmm. like asteroids. Like, whoa. Yeah. Or aliens. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of stuff that could be, you know, we'll, uh, we'll, we won't hold our breath, but 2025... So we've got 2018, we're visiting the sun. 2025, we're landing on an asteroid. Maybe even setting up permanently, permanent little mining colonies and stuff like that. Because remember, some of those asteroids are actually bigger than our moon. Seriously, mm-hmm. some of the ones in the, the, the yeah. asteroid belt. But what's stopping these things from being stopped by then, these programs? Like, oh, um, well, we're not yeah. going to do that anymore. Though, uh, thankfully, I would say, uh, President Bush signed some uh, legislation or some sort of some sort of act to move uh, our efforts forward to returning towards the moon, which is what kicked off the Orion mm-hmm. uh, spacecraft project. And actually, even though that was you know enacted by President Bush, reviewed by President Obama, that's still underway. Yep. Uh, it's a little bit under uh, fire right now because they're kind of robbing from that fund to keep the space shuttle running. Yeah. Because the space shuttle's falling apart. Well, that's that's what the same series of bills was. Yeah. That they don't, they're ca- trying to adapt them to the next se- step. Right, and space flight. and they're going to see if they can get a supplemental fund for the space shuttle itself. So it is a little. Um, <clears throat> I guess my point is, is, it the new spaceship is a little at risk. Yeah, but it's hopefully going to work out. I, you know, I'm excited that some of this stuff could be potentially happening within my lifetime, and I yeah. think that's what it all comes down to. Yeah, I mean, I could either myself. I mean, probably not, but maybe like my nephew could be living on a colony ship in 30 years. You know. Yeah. Not in 30 years. Not, it not ain't going to happen. Maybe. Sorry. That would be 2041 or 2040. I mean, that's a, that's a ways out. Yeah. Yeah, but then think about what they thought about like in the 50s and 60s. You know, I, I feel like we're talking like them, you know. Yeah, like, but look at how oh, far. one day in the future. But look how far we have come. Since 2000. The, we have come a long ways. Now. All we've done is, you know. Computers. Computers. Engines. The moon. But we still haven't like... Yeah, we got to the moon in the microwave. One of the things holding us back the is that we've been so. I'm just saying, it's a lot of stuff. The shuttles yeah, but as far as like space goes, we haven't like gotten much further. No, that's true. I think a lot of that has to do with funding issues. We've been relying upon these space shuttles that are using technology from the 70s, 60s yeah. in some cases. And uh, you know, if we could build this new Orion rocket, is going to be using all new technology, all new computer systems. Although, ironically, the uh, the module is based heavily off of the early stuff. Well, if you do something right, yeah, the worse it works. Redo it, but but yeah, I, I agree with you, dude. It's 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 hard to be optimistic when we haven't seen anything. Um, I, old- I love it. I love the space. I love everything. But it's just we. I just I we almost feel do, like it's we imperative. We need to do more. We need to spend more money on this because it's just it's going nowhere. It's mm-hmm. done nothing. Or we need to let it use the money we allocate for it. Yeah. Or we just need to stop fighting wars. Everybody, you know, get together oh, there you go. and go to space. Man, like in Star just, Trek. just try to love one another. Well, yeah. let's start with what we've got so far. The, uh, the, the sun probe mm-hmm. on target and the Orion spacecraft is... It's coming along. Coming along. Yeah. 
I'm going to go. That's some pretty positive stuff. Yeah. And there, this is, we'll leave you with this. This is actually kind of cool. And I didn't put anything in the show notes. I just totally remember this off the top of my head, so I apologize, guys. Um, there is already a, uh, there's a community of people who represent organizations that want to go to Mars. And they are already doing a live on Mars mock experiment. Like a biodome sort of thing? Yep. yep. Nice. Um, And simulating that world Mm -hmm. and and, uh, also going outside of it and having to hike. That's one of the areas where they really drove home the information about the physical activity required. Yeah. Was through this stuff already. So they're already actively... Uh, pretending like they're living on Mars to try to generate what what experiences they'll need and what they'll need to be prepared for. You know, and another avenue that we didn't really talk about much here, but you know, the privatization of space travel may be within our lifetimes as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's all you know the Virgin uh, space yep. craft. Yep. And the X plane is that what it was? Uh, yeah, I think so. Mm. And there's others out there that are capable of Earth orbit flight. Uh, yeah. Now that's something I'm more interested in. And technically, you know, some of those places have the money that the government can't always come up with. Yeah, that's true. You're talking about spending. I know that it gives be- me like a reason to make money in my life. Yeah, yeah but do you also want to go to Mars? Brought to you by Nestle. I know. Sure. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. If it no, gets if it gets me Mars. there, I don't care. It's gonna go that way eventually. Anyways, <laughs> they'll eventually work their way into that. So. It, it will be no matter what. It's yeah. gonna be sponsored by someone. Hey, maybe we can get somebody to sponsor this show. Wouldn't that be nice? That and would be go to awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, Jupiter at Night is live Monday through Thursday. Um, and uh, if you tuned in yesterday and stuck around, some people won some free giveaways from the J Man over here. Yep. Nice. Well done, sir. That was cool. Very nice. And I'm sorry if you didn't tune in and get it. Uh, We'll try to do more giveaways as soon as we can get more stuff to give away. Yeah. All right. Now, we could also use your help if you'd like to help us spread the word about Jupiter Night. If you enjoyed this episode or previous episode, send it around. However you like to do so. Twitter, blog it, link it, email it. Whatever works for you. I don't care what Alan says. Twitter is cool. Whoa. That was definitive. (laughs) (laughs) All right, everybody. Well, until uh, tomorrow night, have a good evening.